fifth speaker for today, learning technologist, Brenda Frisk. Thank you. I'm going to quickly start up here. And you notice that you've got some glasses on your seat, so just hang on to those. Now, what you would have heard, as there is little technology booths, is that this is an example of some of the 3D technology that we're working with in being able to communicate and tell stories. And what would have taken a sound team, possibly a multimedia team, to develop this, now it can be done very quickly, and we're finding that it's being done in kids' classrooms, in their offices. This technology is happening very quickly. So what I'm going to talk to you about is Z-Depth. And if you all just kind of raise your hands, this is kind of what we call our XY coordinates. And once you add out your other part, now that's your Z-Depth. That's the technology that I'm going to work with and talk about around the framework of teaching and learning. So learning and teaching. Now this is something, when I became an educator um, and we go over to people's homes for dinner, Right away, everybody would introduce me to their kids and say, you know, Mrs. Frisk is a teacher. And I thought, my god, I'm going to end up at the kids' table. And it seemed right away that everybody's been educated, so everybody thinks they know and they understand education. When I became a geek, or I guess I always was a geek, when my geekness came out, and technology was really the area that I really uh, moved towards and strived towards, I found very quickly I was quite intrigued in how people learn. We're scared of learning in a lot of ways because learning means change. And that is terrifying for a lot of people. It's terrifying in business and it's terrifying as we get older as adults and we think we frame up who we are and we start building those walls up in our heads and how we understand how we should behave and the things that we should do. Now, if you look in your car glove box, now as a Canadian coming to New Zealand and learning to drive on the other side of the road, that's real fear. And you should have been afraid as well while I was learning how to drive on the other side of the road. We look in our glove boxes every day, and how many of you have actually read that manual? Do you really know? <laughs> do you really know how that vehicle works? And this is the technology that we've designed the 3D things around us for years. We've designed in 2D to create a 3D product. And now we're trying to change that. And so really what learning and teaching to me is about is about communication. It's how we describe in business, how we teach people to do things. It's how we look in formal education and how we get innovation into our future that will hopefully build our economies. So why did I get involved in education? If you ask my past teachers, I was that kid in the back of the room teaching myself how to speak Pig Latin, which quite coincidentally, that was my other language that I put my hand up earlier because I was really disengaged with my education, my formal education. I was what we would call, as our reluctant futurist, I was a reluctant learner. And driving here on the motorway today, I saw many reluctant learners being taught how not to cut off the person in front of them as you're driving. So we learn every day, everything's around us. As I said, I was very disengaged, but then a teacher one day said to my mom and dad, you know, your daughter, we think she's a visual learner. So now I became this visual learner, which I thought was a special club. And now I realize that the education that I was hooked into and having to learn in, the reason I was engaged is because it wasn't addressing my needs. So here's me with better hair on another day. And here's me learning in school. And I didn't want to traditionalize and kind of stereotype educators, so I used our our famous uh, black beans that we find. And basically what I had to learn in a tool was linear. I had pen, I had paper. You know, we did some other projects and so on. 
But I tell you, I would rock if I was a kid nowadays in school. But would I? You know, nowadays, kids, you see them, they get in and they get off the buses. They're plugged in. They have multi-sensory. I work in a computer at home where I've got five or six applications, and my husband comes to sit down in front of my computer and actually goes overload and closes everything down and goes to his one application, does his email, goes into the next one, turns off all the music I just had on, plus I'm watching True Blood on the other computer that I'm hooked into. And, you know, so do we really work in these linear ways? What these tools enable us to do, though, is to be able to be connected. And we've seen already early this evening and this afternoon about the Web 2.0 and what's happening with that and how we disseminate and access information differently. These students coming up, and some of us old dogs as well, are truly connected 24-7. But what happens is that you walk into a lot of formal education or training that's happening in industry, and it goes back to the pen and the paper. It goes back to a linear process. I'm just going to touch on this briefly, because if anyone knows about the assessment word in education, how we assess, this is a dangerous minefield to go into. But I think how we assess needs to be seriously looked at as well. And there's several professionals around the world that are actually taking this head on. And I think what happens is that, are we actually assessing memory? Or are we assessing our knowledge? And I think too often, to check the boxes, we assess memory. So Web 2.0, Web 1.0, Web 3.0, Web 4.0, where are we at right now? I'm not really sure. But what's really intriguing to me is how fast it's been connected and how fast it's grown. I went back and visited a family in Canada and visited a good friend of mine and her daughter, who's 12, was showing me that she had just learned how to play the guitar. She'd also picked up digital cameras and started using that. I said, cool, who's your instructor? Where are you going? She goes, on the web. So you've taught yourself how to play the guitar and you've taught yourself how to shoot and manage a digital camera on the web. She goes, yep. And I'm actually going to go to university and check out one of their webinars that they're having online. I said, you're 12. God, I was hanging out at 7-Eleven when I was 12. So are we challenging the kids as we need to? And are we challenging them in the classrooms? Is there that fear to open up? If you walk into many education institutions, they do have an ownership to make sure that education is good, that children are safe. But through that, there needs to be a balance because we tend to lock things down from that fear. And if you've ever been in a classroom in a computer lab, every kid has bypassed every security system that's locked them down through proxy web servers and the teachers running around going, how did you get in there? How did you, how did you get into that website? So we need to enable our educators and we need to support them in this. So an interesting thing, my dad, he's a retired bank manager, love him dearly. His risk adverseness is having a red stripe in his tie. And <laughs> he is an amazing guy. And what's happened with him lately is that he has gone on beyond what he's comfortable with. Old dogs can't learn new things? I think not. He phoned me up the other day and he said he was at a senior lunch and they were playing Wee Wee, Web Wee. He wasn't sure what it was. And I said, Wee? He said, yeah, it's this computer box. It was really cool. Now, my parents used to tell people when I was an educator, it was easy. She's a teacher. Everyone gets that. Now, when I went into technology, what does she do? Uh, it's something with computers. We're not really sure what that is. We really don't know. And so now, he's playing bowling with Wii. And he's excited about it. And he's telling me this new adventure that he's done. And I just thought, that's just fabulous. So somehow, they broke down the barrier for my dad, that fear, to be able to try something new and to kind of go out of himself and enjoy a new experience that, at 80, he would have never touched on his own. I also have another theory that's called the Peter Butter and Jam Theory. And I saw this time and time again with my kids in the classroom when we talked about communication and we talked about being able to tell a story with pictures. So when we started at the beginning of the term, I used to say to the kids, okay, I want you to explain to your neighbor how to make a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Of course, they've never seen one. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Now, I want you to write it down in words. By the fifth page, they'd go, Frisk, ugh, we're writing, we can't do this anymore, and we're only halfway through the peanut butter. I said, okay, now we're going to walk over to the computer, and we're going to engage in Flash, and you're going to create this visualization and these actions so people can see how to do it. So what happens in the world I live in, in that Z depth, is it reduces the amount of words, and in a global economy, 
we connect with people from different languages and different experiences every day, and that's something we need to reduce to be able to make the world smaller. So as I said, our world is constantly changing, it's interactive, it's visual, and it's dimensional. Otherwise, if you all turned sideways, we wouldn't see you. So we need to start thinking in that space. 3D is reaching a critical mass, and a young PhD student that's coming to work with us, uh, Richard Cross, did a lot of work in that, and he's talked about areas where 3D is embedded now in popular culture everywhere. We're used to it. It's beyond just entertainment. It's beyond just games. And we're actually seeing it being used as a communication tool and a way for people to actually engage with business. So those of you that have your anaglyph, put them on, please. Anaglyph stereo, this is old technology. It's been around for a long time. And you may want to share with your neighbors as well. Don't be shy. I can't see you with them on. You won't look geeky. And the great thing about this is this costs about three cents, this technology. But what it does is it starts to give you depth. You may need to drop the lights a bit, guys. It starts to give depth to something as simple as projecting e-learning over the web through a projector. You're able to actually see and feel that you can actually start to touch. Now, these 2D images, I mean, this anaglyph has been around for a while. And it's not that it's jumping out at you like it's some of those 3D visions where you know, Mickey Mouse is coming out to wring your neck. It's just giving you a different feel. Keep them on. There's more to come. So as I said, we communicate in a 2D world for a 3D world. And I just experienced the most anguishing, probably, thing we have to do as an adult is buying a house. We sold and bought in three weeks, which I think is a New Zealand record, even for New Zealand. Um, certainly is in Canada. We stay in a house forever and, and have all our children and parents and pass it down from, from family to family, I think. And those of you that are familiar with the Barcelona Pavilion, 1929 Spain, this was designed as part of an exhibition. Very famous pavilion. This is a, a quick 2D shot from some of the software that we're experimenting with that gives actually 3D dimension as well. And I'm going to scoot back and forth here for you to show you some of that. So here we've got an interactive 3D model. And nowadays, for 3D to engage and tell stories in 3D, you don't need to have a degree in 3D development. You don't need to have a CAD engineer background. 3D is now becoming what the web used to be. Web used to have your programming and so on. Now you've got WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And you're able to engage and build a website very quickly. But what that little bit of anaglyph does, it actually gives the model the depth and a field of perception. And this is the technology through e-learning that we're trying to look at and see how can we really give a rich experience for those users at the other end who are so used to engaging. It's not a linear flow anymore. If we're going to start delivering education and training, whether it's through economics or whether it's because it's engaging and different, we need to start doing it in different ways. I'm going to scoot back here. Here's the death of Alt-Tab, right? There we go. All right, so communicating. This is a PowerPoint slide. And here we've got a full 3D interactive model that you can easily talk. Think how excited CEOs are now that they can actually engage and show what their product is that they're selling. 2D images. Here's an example where it's a simple PDF. I could have had this when I was buying my house. And now, from a 2D world, you can quickly actually think about what it is you're buying. You know, expecting to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and drop it just from a 2D layout just doesn't quite work anymore. And so now you can easily email this, engage in a real PDF, and understand what it is you're actually looking at. High D HDR, high dynamic range. This is a 3D model. This is a Boeing 777. And look at the technology that you can now just quickly create 2D images from your 3D. This is a 3D model that's had an environment wrapped around it. So now your workflows are changing. Things are starting to be easy. I'm looking at that resolution. I should turn my laptop around for you. Here's another one. Drop it simply. You could drop this on your dining room table and have the car look like it's sitting there. What some of these technologies allow, we see Wiki Wikipedia, where people are getting the information. And we need to be able to let people unpack that information. And once it's able to be taken and, and repacked, then is when it really becomes knowledge. And this is an example of a simple PDF again. 
Here's a trebuchet. And what they can do is take these parts digitally, and they can actually see how this is going to work and how it's going to be made. So you get all the pieces, and now you can start building it. So places where it economically is not feasible to have a lot of equipment, you can actually now go in and start demonstrating and practice and test these things very easily, embedded in PDF, embedded in a PowerPoint. So just to wrap up real quick, as my lights are flashing, what I challenge for you is, are you still two-dimensional? Or have you found your Z depth? Thank you.